just introduce yourself. about this word design. Whenever we talk design, it has many connotations, it has many meanings, it has uh, many and it has many disciplines. So design, we say that this product design, furniture design, graphic design, many design schools have these some, uh, specialties in one or some of these issues. And besides that, so it has automobile, it has electronic, it has structural, Designed yesterday, uh, uh, my colleague from Kanpur was telling me that I am an odd man out here. I said, yeah, you must be doing some kind of design. He said, yes, helicopter control system and all that. I said that you are in the right company. Everybody is some kind of a designer here, you see. So the image at the top, uh, we say that, okay, is it also design? Well, it is also design. What kind of design is this? If we ask you a question, you know, what kind of design is this? So many people, when I put this question, is answer it differently, you know. And finally, some kind of consensus is reached that it is image design. And everybody works these days towards this image design, whether corporations, institutions, governments, individuals, all looking at what kind of image they are going to project. So you have these annual reports, you have the websites and things like that. They all exercises this image design. It's become very, very important these days. No, uh, not saying that others are not so important. But others can also become part of this overall uh, image design process. Now we have other connotations about design. That is, you know, the Kutti Rasul Kutti has said about the sound design. He talks about the sound design. And then we have uh, designer drugs and designer life forms. And not only a designer drugs in the positive form, but we have also designer narcotic drugs, you know. So anything that we put a word beh before preceding design becomes a design, you know, these days. So, so let's look at this total kind of spectrum. We have this, and there is a also a uh, kind of a bad connotation about that. Say, like, so for example, it's that here he has got designs on so and so, uh, which means some design is also in terms of exploitative tendencies. It is built into it, which is in a way that's what we are doing: exploiting materials to suit our purposes exploiting our uh, energies or creativity to make things which can be, uh, which will entice the buyers to buy these kind of products. So, confusion, diversity about the word design and we have found that there are people have, every person you ask what is design has his own definition of design. In fact, I have a book here which I have compiled which is uh, maybe hundred and odd uh, uh, design definitions and in fact it consists of some of the definitions from my students, from some of the faculty and colleagues, and also what international designers talk about, what uh, their views about design. So how do we reconcile with so much, such a vast spectrum is a question. And then, of course, how we'll, how we'll train the students in such uh, big uh, area of design. So where are we in this whole spectrum? That's what we have to probably investigate. When we talk about product design, we see that uh, talked about it already, you know, two basic aspects of design are there. One is the technical aspect, another is the humanistic aspect, that's how we put it. So the technical aspect which relates to the engineering, uh, engineering part, and the humanistic aspect which sometimes we call design or industrial design in particular, 
So engineering aspects or technical aspect would look after materials, processes, mechanisms, performance, usefulness, whereas the humanistic aspects can look after ergonomics, aesthetics, acceptability, fit, usability. A lot of people have expounded on all these words. But when you talk of totality, holistic design, usefulness and usability have to come together to make a complete product. Unless both these both these aspects come together, the products cannot be successful. They will not be acceptable. And so, but it can also come to any kind of design. For example, you have this design of banking systems, or design of habitat, or design of healthcare systems. There also you have to deal with the technical aspects of it, and there are there also you have to deal with the humanistic aspects of it. Materials may not play a role, but we still have this other things, the mechanisms of delivery performance, the usefulness. On the other hand, the acceptability of healthcare system or of fitting the healthcare system. We, we had many examples how healthcare systems are rejected, you know, although they may be good, but we have to see that they, they fit in properly and how they are made acceptable. Now, if we look at it, we must also have the metric for these things. For example, if we have this uh, matrix of technical and humanistic, each product will have its qualities about technical qualities and humanistic qualities. You may be able to place it somewhere in the middle of this matrix, say 5 5. And the goal of the design or the future design is to shift this point to the top right hand corner so that it comes near to it, near to the excellence, you know. And now we see this this metric is not static. It moves with time. It goes up with time. And why? Because it has there are aspirational changes, lifestyle changes, visions change, knowledge changes, technology changes, economics changes. So this now what was today at 5.5, tomorrow it becomes at 3.3. So the challenges to the designers are there for all the time in every situation. And particularly looking at the future, they have, they have, they have more, more, such, more such challenges. Now here, what is the perception? We already talked about a little bit of perception. What is the perception about engineering and design? Engineering, something to do with, if you see common person, you know, it has something to do with machines, structures, it's a manly stuff, it's hard, you know. Design, something to do with fashion, color, motif, and stuff, girly stuff, soft, you know. But what is the reality? We, we think what it is, you know, what is engineering, and what is because we think we know all that, what is. Here is engineering. Short, but I'll read a little bit. One or two. So it is a creative, engineering, they say, is a creative application of scientific principles design and develop structures, machines, apparatus, or manufacturing processes. On the other hand, designing, creating, and developing concepts and specifications that optimize the function, value, and appearance of the product, and so on and so forth. Now, if we look at this, creativity seems to be common in both these, both these definitions. But the confusion is still compounded by when you talk about, when you talk about science, when science bring, uh, are brought in. Technology is brought in, engineer, art is brought in, research is brought in. Then you see that there are pairs kind of get formed, you know, science and technology, science and research, art and design, technology and engineering, you know. And it compounds the, the kind of a confusion. And what do we say, if we really want to reduce this kind of a confusion, let's say, what is the, we can say that science is knowledge, technology is also knowledge, and engineering is a process, and design is also process. So probably we can we can put them together in some way, some coherent way, so that we can deal with it, deal with this complexity and the spec huge spectrum of design. So the creative and it could be a bridge, creative methods embedded in art can become. People talk about art, uh, uh, combining art. What is what are we taking from art really? Creative methods. One of the important things is creative method embedded in art can become a backbone of developing excellence. That many people have uh, emphasized on this. And now if we look at this this chart, we have on one side is a science, which is knowledge. On the other side is engineering and design, which is process. Then there is technology, which is also knowledge. <coughs> Products and services, which are out, which come out of the technology and engineering, and which come out of design and technology combined. And products and services, which are then fed to the society. Going back and in the bridging, these things is creative methods embedded in art social awareness, philosophy, and values, and also the, the basic knowledge which comes from the sciences. 
you know, they have all to come together to deliver something which is acceptable to the society in the form of products and services. So without, without this bridge, without being able to deliver products and services, technology and science don't, doesn't mean much really. If you are not able to deliver the fruits of science and technology, science, engineering, design and technology, then, then the whole work that we are trying to do is, uh, well, I would say useless, you know. So we have to make sure that this cycle is completed. This cycle of delivery is completed. And if one of the chains in this cycle breaks, and probably the fix will not be there, acceptability will not be there, and uh, uh, success of these systems and the usefulness of these systems to the society will not be there. So if we say the concept, if we go back to this, the concepts and knowledge. Concept and knowledge base is different in engineering design and industrial design. But to be successful and achieve excellence, joining of hands and pulling each other towards higher achievements is imperative. The creativity and problem solving approach is important for both. Pedagogic tools if borrowed from each other can aid reconstruction of engineering and design education and lead to, towards excellence. Yeah, if you look at these, these are some of the things that could, uh, which are on the top, like uh, knowledge of human sciences. Say this is for, you know, the say kind of a, a script, you can say. You know, what we can borrow from each other, what we can borrow from design and give to engineering, and what we can borrow from engineering and give to design. We say when I uh, read out one or two, knowledge of, hum for engineers, education, knowledge of human sciences, we can add. Art and aesthetic sensibility, people have talked about it. Synthesizing tools is very, very important. And on the other hand, we have knowledge of physical sciences, which must be imparted to the designers, mathematical tools and analytical tools, some evaluation technique techniques, which is design metrics, and research rigor. And on the other hand, we must have some kind of freewheeling in uh, engineering, which would help them, you know, break from this very strict regimen of uh, mathematics and cal calculation and things like that. And this probably could be taught, taken up in the classrooms. But there are other things, you know. For example, developing insights, professional respect, professionalism, social awareness, openness, and respect for each other and respect for other disciplines. This is not so easy to uh, develop in the classroom situation. And probably students need to be taken out, as many people have referred to, projects in the villages and so on and so forth. And these would help the students to develop these other qualities, which are also important for making a good contribution to the society. Actually, I want to read verses one. What is the role of a role of a? This is from the book, which is the last para. A design education program essentially offers opportunities to imbibe the essence of design by interacting with design theoreticians design philosophers, design practitioners, and critical peer group. It also offers discrete but relevant modules of information, problem solving and attitude building techniques, which are then put together in various doses and combinations to create new relationships, new products, and new systems. With that, uh, I will end this. Thank you very much.